Good afternoon. I'm Dick Miller, and I'm again here with, uh, with our state senator, and uh, we're glad to have Jeff here today. Um, today is the first of the uh, November, and it feels like it's the first of November today, doesn't it? <laughs> it feels like it's the first of December. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> ah, I noticed there's a little ice on the pumpkin today, this morning, and, and more than just frost, I think. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Wisconsin. Yes, we're it here. Is. It's it deer hunting time too. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, and that's coming up. Uh, well, that'll be late this month, isn't it? Because uh, Thanksgiving. Well, we're in the middle of bull hunting season, and, yeah. and then we'll have gun hunting season, which is a good chance for me to take this moment just to remind people of of that and uh, and the fact that CWD is an act is a serious issue in Wisconsin, and I encourage everyone, as I did last month, to to uh, have your deer tested. It's important for us as a whole to be able to get that testing done through the DNR and know if or where DNR, I'm sorry, where CWD is hitting us mm -hmm. the most and, and uh, continue to study it. Well, I would imagine, yeah, uh, it's not a matter, just a matter of the health of the hunter, but it's also being able to follow the movement of the uh, disease and where it's at in the state. I don't know if everyone really gets the urgency of this, but mm -hmm. we we may really be wiping out our deer in this state if we don't get uh, get a grip on this. Yeah. Have you, uh, now let's see, when, when was archery season? When did that start? So that started in the middle of September, or third, oh, that's right. I think third week of September. Uh, I guess so. I haven't heard many reports, so I don't no. know what's going on uh, yet. But, but there are but there are kiosks the DNR have out there for people to actually stop and and do the a self um, um, uh, I should say submitting their deer head um, and then they get the report back give all the information and they get the report back within two weeks so oh that's, yeah. it's fairly quick does the state do the the uh, have their own lab the DNR or I does believe it? it's I believe yeah I believe it. You know, it might be at UW, but at Madison. Okay, but it's, yeah, so it's fast, fast. It's, it's so. pretty quick. And, uh, and also, we, we, I want to emphasize the disposal of deer carcasses. It's, it's been traditional even for, you know, I, I, for people like myself, is when you, when you finish your deer, mm -hmm. uh, processing your deer, you think you're doing everybody a favor by everybody meaning the squirrels and the rabbits and the, you mm -hmm. know, whatever it might be out there to feed off the carcass and put it back in the woods. We are emphasizing: do not do that anymore. We need that those the deer disposed of properly, so that it is because it's the prions in the in the carcass that actually works its way into mm -hmm. the ground and, and stays there, and that's how it spreads. So, what what is the, the recommended method of? Well, uh, we are we that? have a piece of legislation that it's a bipartisan piece mm -hmm. of legislation that I am uh, sponsoring that. Uh, hopefully, we can get funding, but it, it's never going to happen this year. But mm -hmm. by next year. Um, for dumpsters, in, we want to put at least six okay. dumpsters in every every county, distributed around, and put those carcasses into dumpsters. But lot, some counties are actually doing this on their own, and I mean the, you know, the hunting clubs mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. others are raising money and, and getting those dumpsters themselves this year. And if you if you know of, of one, you know, bring it, bring your carcass to that dumpster. Well, now, do you know, do they burn the carcasses or how do they treat them? The best thing would be if we're burning. There's only a couple of places in the state the that have the capabilities them. to incinerate okay. the carcasses. But they, but those dumpsters with deer carcasses will go to particular uh, landfill sites that are taking them. Not all landfill sites will okay. take them, but some will. They must be sealed lands. They must be sealed. Some well, all landfill sites need to be sealed, but I sure. think some of these were, for instance, in Eau Claire County is privately owned, and I don't think they want to take on the potential liability because there's so much mystery around CWD oh. right now. Well, just as an aside, years ago I raised uh, uh, sheep, and if I would take a, a lamb in for butchering, I got the carcass back. Yeah. Because they didn't want to deal with it. Right, yeah. And so... Uh, in a way, the hunter is in the same situation, but there may be options. Right. So, and we're working on it to make it even easier. Good. Good. That, that's that's important. Um, just uh, bef before we started, you brought up a real important topic, and I know you want to touch on that, and that is the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. Being that you mentioned today's the first of November, today's the first day for uh, signing <clears throat> up for the Affordable Care Act for it, 
and you have it till the middle of December. Mm -hmm. It's a six-week period that um, it, it is. It used to be longer, but it's that's what it, it is. What it is. So you need to go to um, healthcare.gov and go through this. And I just heard a, a report on the way here t this morning about um, how it's 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 actually got improved so much that you actually will see um, ratings of the different plans mm -hmm. for, from, because uh, we've had enough time where people can rate them, and just like you do anything else online these days, and it gives you, it makes it a lot easier for people to figure out what is good for them. I haven't heard that, probably the same thing, because it's rated with stars. Yeah. You're given a certain number of stars in, in terms of the reviews people have. That's have right. Put them. Well, I had heard uh, just recently, too, that the, that the cost reduction that was forecast when this act came into being is starting to show. Yeah, it's really starting to come around as, as a, a benefit for people. So that's, that's super. Um, and I think at the time, the, the thought was it would take a while to do that. Like anything else. Yeah. I just wish, we, I wish Washington and Congress would get off of the um, petty battles that they're having mm -hmm. over health care and come together because all health care needs to be fixed, including the Affordable Care Act. And if we work together, we can make that happen. But yeah, right they're now still, they're not willing to work together. Well, they're still talking about uh, several tens of millions of people that are not covered. Under That's right. Health yeah, care. here in Wisconsin, you know, we so you know we could even touch once more. It we should be taking that money from the Affordable Care Act into Wisconsin, and we could provide uh, affordable health care to eighty over eighty thousand more families in this state. Now, That's super. I guess uh, having been on social security, uh, well, social security, but Medicare. Uh, for, for a few years now. Um, uh, I'm not advocating necessarily, I know some of the people running for president are advocating Medicare for all, and I'm not sure I'm uh, knowledgeable enough to even consider that. But all I can say is for those of us who are Medicare agent, we have a pretty good coverage. We right. really are, uh, I think most of us are very happy with it. Uh, and uh, um, and like any plan, perhaps that would be proposed at the federal level or state level, if you have to pay a percentage, um, it's not so bad. If you have to pay 100 yeah. percent, you know, some families talk about anywhere from 15 to 20 thousand dollars a year yeah. for, or 20. I'm sorry, 1,500 to 2,000 dollars a month. A month, yeah. Um, that gets to be prohibitive in mm -hmm. most cases, probably. That's right. So. You know, it, it just one last thing on that. We, they, there is all the talk about Medicare for all. I wish they would add one word to that. Improved Medicare for all, because like I said, everything needs mm -hmm. to always be improved and, con and continue to be worked on to make it better and better for the consumer. And we, we got to get away from the, you know, the uh, let's just throw everything out and start from scratch over and over and over. We should take what we have and we should just keep improving it. And just tweak it where, where we yeah. find we have some negative issues. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's hard to do sometimes <laughs> in the government, isn't it? Yes, um, it is. It, it's too bad we, we, we can't address all things that way. You know, it's uh, it'd be so much more simple. Yeah, I'd sure like to. Yeah, yeah. Well, are there any highlights that come to mind? Uh, we've It's been a month since we've been together here. and. Uh, um, I know you've been to Madison a few times between. The not Madison. enough. Not enough. Not enough. And uh, but rather than put a lot of, you know, spend our time talking about the lack of work in Madison, I'll so I'll report that I've been in um, Denver a mm. couple weeks ago. I spent several days in Denver for a national conference on broadband. Um, the cable companies actually sponsored this along with the National Council or National Convention mm -hmm. of State Legislatures. So the so there was a couple of good things that came out of that for me. Uh, one was that I was out of the state of Wisconsin. I was with three other colleagues from the state of Wisconsin, and they were, they were Republicans. And we had a good opportunity to spend a lot of time together, and we don't seem to get enough of that time in Madison. So that was really good for all of us. Um, we watched the Packers win on Monday night that, against Detroit that week and, and had a great time at a Packer bar in, in Denver. And, and uh, I think got to know each other. So that's a side note. But the things that we saw and learned from the industry and from the scientists that are working on, the, on what's coming in the next several years was fascinating. And, and 
mind blowing. I mean, it was it was incredible, and we need to work even harder. I came away even more determined to try to uh, to provide that access to every household um, in rural Wisconsin. Uh, we're not going to get it. And the cable companies, uh, you know, they again they were mm -hmm. co-sponsors of this thing, but I would say they're not the answer for everybody and probably not at all for rural areas like my, my own and and we we need to uh, do a whole lot a whole lot of things to make it easier for people to get that access and I'm going to be introducing bills in the coming months so by next month um, I'll be able to even uh, give a more uh, defined um, um, uh, talk about what what we're introducing but uh, we're working on this uh, daily, my staff and I, because this is such a high priority, I think, for Western Wisconsin. And, and so I'm making it a high priority in my office that we do all we can to provide access to the Internet for everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, now, at, the, at the, your meeting, you mentioned there are some other things that they brought forth that are coming so well, a, it was it was incredible. So you hear you hear 5G is is mm -hmm. is the coming thing, right? 5G. Don't ask me, and I'm certain probably not you, what that actually we don't means, know what that is. how to define that. <laughs> but this group where we went to a lab and spent a day, and this is from this is legislators from all over the country. Mm -hmm. So it was a pretty large group, and they split us up, and we we took these uh, tours around the lab. And they demonstrated to us so many amazing things, but in the end, they talked about 10G. And they're not talking about it as a possibility. They're talking about it as it's already there. They have already developed this, all of the science till they are up to 10G, and yet here we are where we have not figured out how to provide 5G yet. And that comes from regulatory issues and, and uh, just other challenges to get to every household and every business. So there they are sitting with the science. I mean, they kept repeating that. The science is done. Mm -hmm. They're up to 10G and waiting for us to catch up so everybody can access all the amazing things that they're talking about. So, um, which brings me around to, I suppose, one thing I can just say about that is artificial intelligence. So AI is the mm -hmm. new acronym, which is simple, AI. But artificial intelligence is, uh, is happening already around us, but it's, it's even, it's even uh, going to take over a lot more if, if, once we have access the way we should. Well, I think it is around us all. The, in fact, I wonder if that would be the, the correct label for some of the ability of the car we drive. Oh, it is. To spot the lines and, and, yep. and brake for us when we're coming up behind a it car. It is, yeah. So it's, it's uh, uh, that, I, some of it really, I think we adapt to well. I, some of it we don't know yet how we'll adapt to, do we? No, we don't. And there's a lot of fear and concerns, yes. but they actually assured us at this lab about um, we're still in control, you know, so. Uh, it, it's, but I will admit the next day and when we got back to our conference, um, a lot of legislators, conservative, liberal, it didn't matter. Actually, we never really knew who was who mm -hmm. at this conference. We spoke up about how they were creeped out a little bit by what they saw the day before in that lab because it's stuff they had never, ever imagined before. Mm -hmm. And the unfortunate thing is that science in terms of developments always run so far ahead of humans. Sure. And, uh, and I think um, we're not young, real young guys anymore, and I, and, but it, it develops so much faster now than it did 25, 30 years yeah. ago. It's just amazing. I guess I think of the miniaturization. Um, I'm gonna put my age on the, on the line here. When I was uh, in graduate school, uh, we had one computer on campus and we used IBM cards. And so you would carry around your, your, all your information on a pack of IBM cards and you would go yeah. to the lab, you'd, they'd put it, input it, and uh, um, 
you could do all kinds of things. Now we have a telephone that does a hundred or thousand times as much stuff. Yeah. Is that it's idea. amazing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But so it's it really advances quickly. It really does. Um, one of the things I mentioned uh, uh, to Jeff before uh, we we started to record was um, the federal government right now is in the process of talking about running out of money this month. And so there, there, it sounds like there have to be a reauthorization or whatever the correct term is to to uh, uh, debt limit keep people yeah. uh, keep people working yeah. who are working for the federal government. And of course, this always creates a, a huge political issue and and a concern by those who are employed by the federal government. We in Wisconsin, in the state, as well as the county. Um, we're in a different situation. There's something about a balanced budget, I think, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. So in Wisconsin, we are by uh, constitution, we have a we have to balance the budget. Which mm -hmm. so it's a biennial budget for a two-year period. We just did pass the budget in uh, the end of June of this year. So we are in the beginning of our new biennium, and there will be times we if under bad circumstances and I was in office when we hit the recession 10 mm -hmm. 12 years ago and you have to make adjustments I understand I get that when things happen um, those adjustments they'll have to come from within you know what what aren't we going to spend then you know rather than our, where are we going to get more money in it because sometimes you just not, can't count on on uh, more resources coming in so it's yeah, I, it's not a great place you want to be if you're in politics because I think everybody looks bad. It does. There's no there's mm -hmm. no good guys or bad guys when it comes to that sort of thing. It just some things happen and and you better be prepared. Or unless you just made really bad decisions, and and didn't take the advice maybe of the professionals who are telling you 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 shouldn't probably mm -hmm. count on that because we're not sure if it'll if it'll be there. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it, in the county government, it's it's always a process, and of course the budgets are much smaller than the state and the federal level. But it's always difficult to stay within your means because there are a lot of wants and needs that we that we sure. have, just like in families. Well, the interesting thing about the state and the county, when you mention the county, is that the county is the is the distributor, basically, of the state. Right. I mean, that's, that's the way I kind of look at it. The, mm -hmm. And the county is an arm of the state of state government. Right. It is not an entity on its own. And so we we did, we are the, um, you know, the clearinghouse in down in Madison at the state of Wisconsin. But it but it goes back and is distributed through the counties, mm -hmm. whether it be health, and human services, whether it be law enforcement, whether it be uh, fixing our roads, repairing our roads, you know, and. And, and then, of course, school districts as well. But that's how it works. And the county, it's, I mean, the counties and the school districts are really um, the, the uh, de facto distributors of the, of the dollars that come from Madison. And that's where the term unfunded mandates come <laughs> Exactly, come <out>. yeah. <laughs> right. We want you to do this, county, and, but we're not going to pay. We're give not going to give money you money, or we're going to. Yeah. Start out giving you money, then we're going to pull back. Yeah, I just had a meeting this morning before this one with uh, CISA, uh -huh. and I told them I, that's one of my frustrations is that we're seeing bills introduced now, telling, trying to tell schools what they, how they should, um, how their curriculum should be written mm -hmm. for certain things, and and I I have a problem with that at this stage of the game when we aren't going to be giving them more money to support any more unfund any any more mandates that we might place on them mm -hmm. so that's it's always a struggle um, <laughs> I can think of so many instances here that where we had that difficulty of, of uh, delivering a service which may very well have been a good service but not having the funds to do yeah. so but uh, in fact I'll give you a shocking thing and I don't know what I don't know where Trumplow County is at um, on social services but um, I had this week a couple people from Eau Claire County from, hum from Human Services in my office. Mm -hmm. It was their lobby day. Um, and and I, we heard the shocking statistic that in Eau Claire County, 
each social worker has a caseload of 800 cases, an average. That's their average caseload per worker is 800 cases. I mean, I, I just don't, I can't imagine that. I just can't imagine that. Mm -hmm. I think they're, they're obviously overloaded. We've known that for a while now because of the, of the foster care and all the things that have happened in the last couple of years have exploded. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's, I just think that's worth mentioning and putting people in perspective of what we're up, what your county and your human services are up against right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I recall if a year or two ago, the, the issue of caseloads as it pertained particularly to uh, the finance programs and, and uh, that, that is, um, operating on a regional level out of county offices. And uh, those numbers were significantly, fairly high. And of course, another thing that's happened is that with the opiate crisis, yep. um, it's brought a lot of uh, children uh, into juvenile court due to the need that the, the, the care for these kids was maybe being neglected. Yeah. If parents were, um, uh, uh, Struggling with, yeah. with opiate and problems. Methamphetamine is yeah. 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 So it it that that it was a, and I think every county in the state was probably is probably saying that they go way beyond budget and they've got to find money somewhere to support these these kids who are yeah. need a special care and treatment. Yeah, for sure. But uh, um, it's it's a difficult task. Um, are there any other things going on? Uh, uh, Oh, I was going to talk about your trip and, and your and your and with uh, three Republican oh. legislators. And I, and the other night, I guess the other day you had mentioned it, and I said, "Well, I, just, I, I imagine they may be ganged up on you a little bit." <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> we had a good time uh, teasing each other outside of yeah. the world of Wisconsin politics. So it was it was it was okay. It's had, nice had to get fun. To, it's nice to get to know them and find out bit. we're all human. Yeah. 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 We all share a lot of the same, same cares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The same concerns. That's now, right. I, I was just, I can't recall if last time we talked about, I know we, we have somewhere along the line talked about the fact that your Senate district covers three that's, assembly districts. Right, that's how it works. And, and I know the gentleman who is, um, who is assembly person for this county happens to be Republican. Mm-hmm. Now the other two are, are they what party affiliation are so they? So it's so it's split. I have a Democrat in the 91st and a Republican in the 92nd and a Republican in the 93rd. Okay. Now I know in the past there has been, um, in some cases, I not all, but this has been a few years ago that there's been, because they, you and they represent, the same area, mm -hmm. same some of the same issues. I'm sure. Yeah. That, that there's been an effort to communicate together. Does that seem like it's a feasibility, a feasible at this time? It's, it's, uh, made, it's been made difficult by mm -hmm. the leadership in the, in the legislature, but more and more as I keep working on trying to make, build these mm -hmm. relationships, um, like I did in Denver with three sure. Republicans, and um, is that we all begin to understand more and more it isn't mm -hmm. it isn't because we don't want to or don't want to try so particularly so as an example we can it's we definitely have to find a way to work our offices have to work together on mm -hmm. localized issues mm -hmm. so um, up in um, we want to get a premier resort designation for instance for Pepin mm -hmm. and um, Prescott uh, in which is in the 93rd assembly district and so we were working with with uh, Warren Petrick's office up there and we we tried to get it through the the uh, joint finance committee that didn't work during the budget period and we have a separate bill mm -hmm. we're working on as well but but you know there's opportunities like that as mm -hmm. an example mm -hmm. so our, we as voters should be encouraging you folks who are representing us to work together on, on issues that are that are shared in common then and, oh, and, yeah. and well overall not definitely. just not just <laughs> definitely uh, statewide we need to do that yeah you know, definitely 
you know, and so as you see me out there with my truck and my mobile office hours and stop and talk, uh, you know, it's not, it not, I'm not waving down only Democrats, you know, I'm not asking only yeah. people who agree with me. I want everybody to be able to stop and talk to yeah. me. Yeah, the people that's who what we you, should do. The people who you, you represent here yeah. in Wisconsin. Well, that's, that's key. That's really important. Uh, and I guess we would, and I would certainly encourage um, le the legislators, uh, the assembly people in, in your district to, to work to get with you. And um, the teamwork is absolutely necessary today. It is. We've got big issues to tackle. Yeah. We definitely do. We, we sure do. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Well. Here we are. We're at near the end of the year. I do think, by the way, um, the weather is going to affect any opportunity for any more mobile office hours going forward, but I'm hoping actually maybe one or two more nice days to be able to do that. Uh, but you don't, don't have a climate control office. <laughs> <that I pick laughs> Not up, when it's that. And, you know, I can't expect, I can, I can handle it, but I don't expect yeah. people to want to stand yeah. out there and talk to me. So. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess the, uh, I would, you know, I, I really respect your, your making these runs around the, 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 your Senate district and, and with your big sign, you can't be missed. And, uh, um, and certainly encourage voters in the district or constituents, uh, be they whatever party, to take time to stop by and, and visit. I'm, I'm getting a lot, of, it's, it's really working and it's really fun for me. So yeah. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback uh, on that. Feedback, yeah. That's, that's great. Yeah. Well, we're coming to an end. And uh, it is the, today, as we re record this, it's the 1st of November and I think Jeff and I would wish you all a nice Thanksgiving. Yes. And uh, if you don't have turkey, maybe you'll be fortunate enough to have uh, venison. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> At your so, dinner. Yep. So, Enjoy the holidays. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.